This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. So we were able to get married! And we're very excited about it. This was something we didn't think we would be able to do, to accomplish. We were supposed to get married on July 6th, 2020 in the Netherlands. And the coronavirus travel restrictions meant that I couldn't travel from the United States to Europe. Uh, and it also meant that Kaylee couldn't travel from Europe to the United States. And we were looking for every possibility, every opportunity. Um, maybe we could find a country that would let us travel and we could take a coronavirus test and they would let us in. Maybe we could find somebody that would let us in if we quarantined for two weeks and we were willing to quarantine for two weeks to then be reunited and be able to travel back to, uh, in this case, Luxembourg together, which is where we're going to live. But all that research didn't pan out. In fact, I think, Kaylee, you got very frustrated at one point understandably so you know that, that we hit so many dead ends that you, you you're like oh this is gonna work we're gonna be able to see each other we're gonna be together and then it, you hit a dead end and so then you found something that maybe could work and we checked it out and now we know we were able to get married yeah what did you what did you think of or what did you type in or what did you look for it was mainly like you once again pushing about that now pennsylvania also does online remote marriages and now we're like well new york already said no so did california but i typed it in anyway just to appease you and then i came across a usa today article that was talking about remote marriages happening via yeah. surface between different states and now, i was we like had, well we had looked into remote marriage we we talked yeah. to the netherlands you know to not not to be too specific about exactly where but we talked to the play the the council in the netherlands that we were going to get married at and to see if they would do it remotely and they said no but they did at least they accepted my documents they wanted to take my documents uh, and make sure that everything was good so that when i did finally make it there that that my documents were all in order so that was at least nice for them to meet us halfway there but we weren't able to get remotely married and then we looked at a bunch of other places like pennsylvania and no they they might do remote marriages for people who already reside in the state. Well, yeah. But both not are for physically present. Yeah. Both people have to be physically present in the state. Whereas we were you were able to find a service and a state and all that that did not require us to be physically present and yeah. would grant us a marriage license and then the officiant could conduct the ceremony, then the court would issue a certified marriage certificate. And that's what we've got. That's 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 what we ended up with is a this is the paper copy because I'm I'm a lawyer. And so I didn't have 100 percent faith in all the digital stuff because mm. I know that not every court likes digital stuff yet. Uh, we still have a court system here in Northampton County, Pennsylvania, that I, if I understand correctly, still has not moved over to an online docket where you can access the court system really in any way online. Instead, you still have to go to the court. So in this case, we didn't have to go to the court. We didn't have to go to a wedding ceremony, like mm -hmm. in physical location. And it turned out really, really cool. Maybe not the same as an in-person ceremony, of course. I would prefer an in-person ceremony with my wife. Yes. But it did work out to be really, really neat. <laughs> Okay, here's the big magical moment. I always say love is when your Wi-Fi connects. So your love connection was so strong, it came all the way here to me in Utah. Yes, Utah. All right, Leonard, do you take Kaylee as your favorite person to laugh with her, to smile with her, to go on adventures with her, to support her through life tough moments, to grow old with her and find new reasons to love her, every single day i do perfect all right kaylee do you take leonard as your favorite person to laugh with him to smile with him to go on adventures with him to support him through life tough moments to grow old with him and find new reasons to love him every single day i do all right here's the big moment by the powers vested in me and the state of Utah, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may virtually kiss your bride. <laughs>
<laughs> so I thought we would talk about what we did, like specifically today, right? About yes. how, how we went about this, because now that I have the certified marriage license and certificate, I'm confident that this is 100% above board and, and a valid marriage and all that. Um, so what we did, Kaylee found a service called WebWed Mobile. It's kind of a mouthful, Web Wed Mobile. And it reminds me a lot of something out of a Timothy Ferris book, you know, four hour work week. Someone figured out all the different processes, procedures, services, and products that you needed to put together to offer a packaged solution to a problem. And so the creators of Web Wed Mobile, who I think is Junikia Coleman Banks, JC Banks, and yeah. her, I think, husband, Randy Banks, it's husband, yeah, Randy. are officiants. She's a lawyer or was a lawyer, uh, at least has a law degree or, a law degree yeah. or something. And she came up with... justice of the peace now. She was a justice of the peace or something, maybe a tax preparer yeah. at one time. But she came up with this idea to put all these services together into a package that she could then be an officiant. And so you pay her service and she does all this for you. And the service was very good and the service was very quick. There were very few hiccups and, and, the, and the, the, the hiccups along the way were, were handled. One of the hiccups that we had that we want to tell you about is not with the service, but rather just a procedural or, or computer hiccup that we had. The way this service works, web, web mobile people put you in touch with the various parts and procedures that, that you need to do yourself, and then they do the other parts. So applying for the marriage license was something that we had to do ourselves. And applying for the marriage license meant going on to a website that they told us to go to, which turned out to be for Utah County, Utah. And Utah County, Utah has partnered with a couple different electronic services, one of which does identity verification, acuant, A-C-U-A-N-T does identity verification services. You scan your passport or take a picture of your passport and upload it to them. Well, it turned out that our 600 DPI scan of Kaylee's passport for some reason didn't go through. And that was it. That was the end of the process. Weren't <laughs> getting married if that didn't go through. Uh, Kaylee had the idea of trying it at 1200 dpi and that that worked so i'm not saying that you need 600 or 1200 but if you hit that problem you're going to just want to try a whole bunch of different times we were able to call the clerk of court the, the the employee for the marriage licenses her name was carolina and she reset our online i don't know cookie based account that prevented yeah. us from trying again and again and again and again. So she reset it so we could try several more times and we were able to get it on like the fifth try. And it was that was like the big magical moment. Like if that works, then we're pretty sure everything else is going to work. Mm -hmm. So we got a marriage license issued. Uh, it originally had the wrong name and state and place for Kaylee on it. It had like a misspelling of her name and, and it, just, it just got cut off and the system wouldn't let us put in a foreign country. But we were reassured three times explicitly that the system works with foreign countries. It just, the marriage license form didn't have a foreign country available to put on it. So we filled it out with Pennsylvania as, as uh, all the information and everything. And then later on, contacted the court for a correction. And that's what I waited for to, yes, last night at 10 o'clock at night, because I don't know, Oof. the mail was late. Um, I got the the marriage certificate with the correct information on it. So Kaylee's correct name, um, which I have redacted out there because she doesn't want to reveal her full name. Um, and the city that she lives is uh, is redacted out there because she doesn't want people to know where she lives. So um, we got a marriage license, which is not a marriage. It's just saying that the officiant is now authorized to perform the ceremony and then turn the, mar the, the filled in marriage license back in for, uh, for final sealing or s s signing and sealing from the county clerk, uh, kind of like you see here in the center, state of Utah, county of Utah. So then mm -hmm. you get that part and then the officiant contacted us uh, and, and we contacted them and we made an appointment for a ceremony literally the same day. We paid for the service 
we paid an, a fee for an expedited service within 24 to 48 hours, and we were actually able to get the marriage license the next business day. So that's not going to be seven days a week, but that's going to be five days a week. It's going to be business days. Um, mm -hmm. And then they'll marry you. The officiant will marry you any day of the week, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, just schedule it in advance. And so we scheduled it for like basically as soon as possible. I went and put on a suit. Kaylee went and put on her wedding dress and veil. And I we, we did our makeup and, and you know, we did our hair and everything. Um, I invited a friend of mine to be a witness, but this was going to be a witness on like a video chat. But he came over to the house anyway. And so we had a whole little you know, our side of the ceremony from my parents' house. The ceremony was conducted via a video chat service. It's not Zoom. It's not Skype. It's something else they give you. And they and it's just basically a you give everybody the room name and it's basically just video chat with a room name. So everybody types in the room name and goes and then they can enter and chat and, and video and all that. And what you're supposed to do is turn off your video feed, turn off your microphone unless you are the party's or the officiant. And that sort of worked. A lot of people left their video feeds on, but it was very nice. We ended up having, you know, a ceremony on your phone screen. It yeah. worked. Kaylee was alone, basically with the background she has now. <laughs> Kaylee yeah. doesn't have anyone in Luxembourg besides me. Like that's the point is we'd <laughs> like to be reunited because Kaylee took a job in Luxembourg expecting that I would be moving with her and We've completed all of the steps to reunite, and now we would like to be reunited. More on that in a second, though. We then had a time set for the ceremony. I went to my parents' house. My friends came over. Um, we had basically, we still observed social distancing and everything, and they, they, they like held their own phones, and everybody did their ceremony on their own phone. Just we were all there at the same location on my end. And I set up... I mean, here's this is my monopod with Kaylee's hat on it, but I set up a camera on the monopod, uh, uh, my, my phone camera, and just uh, let it view me, you know, so I didn't have to hold the phone. And I think, did you do something similar or did you hold your own phone? I had the snake, the snake thing. She has a, she has a, a, a phone holder on, a, on an arm. Um, so she held, yeah. she held that. So that was a good idea. So then you had your hands free. You had a bouquet. The bouquet was beautiful. Oh, can you show you bouquet? Yeah. This, these are, Kaylee made these wooden flowers. And by make, I mean, we ordered the pre-made wooden flowers and then made them into a bouquet. Yeah. Uh, and they, I had to they dye arrive, them myself. They arrive like that, but unpainted or unstained or uncolored. Uncolored in pieces. But the thing that I love about this is this will last forever now. There's, yeah. you know, except for termites and moisture, that's about the only things that are going to destroy that bouquet. Yeah. Um, and it's made out of a light wood, so it's not terribly yeah, it's heavy. Called, but you still wouldn't want to. Solar wood. Solar wood. And you, would, you still wouldn't want to throw it at anybody. Like it's not a no, bouquet. No, because I mean, throw. it is quite fragile in ways. Like it feels like very, very, like it that, doesn't really feel like woods. That made it from America to me in America, from me in America to her in, in Luxembourg in one piece. So we had our whole ceremony, me in my suit, Kaylee in her dress, and she was so beautiful. <laughs> and it was so lovely, as lovely as it could have been for a remote wedding. Yeah. And the officiant, JC, was lovely. She was enthusiastic. She had a lot of very nice things to say. And we, at one point, realized that we hadn't remembered to do anything about vows. We were so we were yeah. pushing so much to get married that we forgot about doing the vows. So oh, yeah. JC rescued us. She had vows already, so that was nice, yeah. um, as as any officiant should. But you know that so that so they did that, uh, and then we were married and we did like a virtual kiss, and you know it was surreal. I think that was the number one word everybody used was that was surreal. Yeah. It was as fast as a wedding normally is, just remotely, and that made it even more surreal. Normally weddings okay. are fast to begin with, and that's already a little bit surreal. Plus, I mean, this was our original wedding invite, yeah. and I'm hiding the place on it. It was, we, we? we got married on the original date at nearly the original time, just a couple hours late. And it was so beautiful. Like, it felt like a, uh, like a meeting, but it also did feel like a wedding. Her vows were really nice. They were yeah. 
something about an adventure and, and life's adventure together. And yeah, it was and beautiful. And the, the cost wasn't prohibitive. It wasn't cheap either. It was over $1,000. Uh, but it was less than two. And there were a bunch of different reasons why it needed to be that much. One of the things we're doing um, since we are international, here's a couple things legally, since this is a legal education channel, here's your legal education. Um, what it, first of all, I guess, I guess what is a marriage? Let's look that up. That's, that's a really good one. I, I like the definition of, of, you know, legal marriage and, and what you have to form. Uh, was it mutual present intent? I think it is. So, well, this is the definition of a common law marriage in Utah. You can see the, the elements um, of legal age, capable of giving consent, uh, capable of entering a solemnized marriage. Uh, in this case, for common law, you have to have cohabitated. But this is the one. You must mutually assume marital rights, duties, and obligations, and hold yourself out as having become husband and wife. So the key phrase there is the forming a mutual intent to be married, a present mutual intent to be married in front of an official with a proper marriage license issued. So there's really no question that ours is a valid wedding and a valid marriage. Um, now, getting other jurisdictions to recognize a remote wedding, how does that work? Well, there's your, there's your legal education part of it. A marriage license is issued by a county authority, pretty much worldwide. They might call the district something different instead of a county. They call it a district in Luxembourg, for example. But it's still a county. It's still the same thing. It's like the local you know, region of governance. And so this is a marriage license, which has then been completed and is also considered a marriage certificate. How this works is you go to the courthouse, you get permission from the local government to get married. You need permission because it's going to be enforceable at law after you're married. So you go to the local authorities, in my case, a local clerk, or, or uh, in, the, in this case, we went to the clerk in Utah. And the Clerk verifies your identities mostly, verifies that you meet the requirements for being able to be married. You are not currently married. Uh, you are not incapable of being married, like mental capacity wise, or, uh, you know, uh, marriage used to be illegal between homosexual partners. So that sort of thing, you know, not anymore, thank goodness. But, you know, so that used to be an impediment to marriage and you wouldn't get a marriage license. Then you have a licensed officiant who is registered and proper and in good standing with the court, they have to complete the marriage ceremony. They have to make sure you, uh, you express that present mutual intent to be married in front of the officiant and in front of your witnesses. Then the officiant signs or executes the marriage license that is then nearly complete. It probably at that point goes back to the clerk for this signature in the center here, um, um, maybe not actually. I think the license comes with the signature on it and then it just has to be filled out by the officiant. And once it is filled out by the officiant, it is a valid marriage. Maybe a copy gets sent back to the state mm -hmm. uh, or to, this, to the county, excuse me. And that's the big distinction. This is all at the county level. So how does another government know to recognize a county in Utah? Couldn't anybody just make a document, pretend to be a county? Maybe. So what would you do? You'd have somebody further certify the document was, was created by the appropriate authority. In this case, the state of Utah, which is not part of this document yet, the state of Utah will certify the document in a process called apostille, A-P-O-S-T-I-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Apostle is another way it's pronounced. And what it does is it's like certifying the marriage at the state level. So the county issues a marriage license, you get married, whatever. You've now got a signed marriage license. The county then also certifies that. The county says, yes, we verify that this is a good document and a good marriage. And that's what we have here. This is the county certified one. If I scroll down here, 
you can see it says, I, the undersigned clerk or auditor of Utah County, certify that the foregoing is a true and correct copy. And we also have a digitally certified copy, which is cool. We, they, they've been doing that now. They use a entry, they, use, they, they enter the checksum of the digital marriage certificate into the Ethereum blockchain. And they consider that to be a digital certified marriage certificate. Because if you alter that digital document, it will no longer validate through that checksum on the Ethereum blockchain. And the Ethereum blockchain acts as a pretty good ledger that's not going to be tampered with or able to be tampered with, at least not the past transactions. So fairly simple and secure way to verify a document. That's great, but that's all only at the county level. So then we have to go to the uh, a state level. So this is the Apostille process. The state of Utah then will authenticate that document, verify that it is created by the proper authority. They don't actually verify the contents of the document, just that it was certified by the proper authority at the county level. They verify it at the state level. Um, you know, same day service is $95 a document or three to five days is $20 a document. And then they ship it back to you with a state seal on it. Um, I have one of these. I'll put one up on the screen for the video. It's got a literally a, a, a golden colored state seal with a little red ribbon on it and a whole paper attached to it that verifies this document has been certified by the state. And it's stapled together and it says, do not remove the staple because it's the staple document that is verified by the state. And that's it. If you accidentally yeah. break that staple, you got to go get the document apostled again. So with all of that, then in mind, we're married and that's really cool. And yeah. we're very happy with the service that we got from JC Banks and WebWed Mobile. And we are continuing with the process and we will continue to make videos about the process because now we still have some steps to go through. Just because we will have the apostled marriage certificate does not necessarily mean we can just go reunite. We reached out to the Luxembourg embassy um, I'm going to be reaching out to the Portuguese embassy as well because I'm supposed to be traveling through Portugal, through the airport, um, and we're going to be verifying with them exactly what we need. Right now, they have verified that spouses are allowed to travel to reunite. Great, but it stopped there. They didn't say, you're clear to travel. They said, fill out this form. Um, and the form is the spousal reunification form, which is actually kind of complicated. So we're hoping that it could be processed in the next two weeks because my flight is in a little over two weeks. My flight is in mm -hmm. literally two weeks from, from today. So yeah, we're married and we had a decent time of it, as decent a time as you could have getting remotely married. Uh, yeah. And that should solve our problem of not being allowed to travel together. That's not legal advice. Uh, we'll update our, I'll update the channel and up, I'll make an update video when we have news about how well it worked or not. Um, I'm hoping that it works because I really would like to see my wife. Yes. I want to see you. So thank you to JC Banks and WebWed Mobile. Uh, could this have been done without their service? Maybe. It's one of those things where like, yeah, you can build your own house. Yeah. If you have the power to build your own house, great. I did not have, I'm a lawyer and I decided that it was easier to do this through a service once I knew what it was than to try and do this all by myself. Yeah. So. I, I mean, like that. I like. I like that. JC and WebWed Mobile have put this together as a package. If you were, if you were unable to pay for something like that, it might be possible to do this on your own. I just, you're gonna, you're trying, gonna be slogging through a lot of legal stuff. Yeah, it's like trying to get the information. Then you need also someone who is gonna marry you online, like she did. I mean, getting the license is possible and. Like yeah. there is a special rate for if you already got your wedding license to skip that step. <clears throat> that will be cheaper. Um, yeah, so you something... can you can hire Web Web Mobile as just the officiant and yeah, and you can get your license. But I don't want to like. There's a reason why you went through them and did the whole package through them, and then they're responsible yeah, for it. They and just, then we just... have somebody that we could. Because you know what you can't do? You can't go right to the county clerk and be like. 
I need you to be better at this or do this yeah. differently. No, you cannot yell at the county clerk. Um, not effectively anyway. If we paid JC and they messed up or something, not that I'd be mean as, you know, I, I try not to be mean, but, you know, I would be able to be firm and, and, and uh, assertive, uh, you know, in, in getting it fixed. Whereas if I do it on my own and something goes wrong, well, it's on me. Plus, I mean, it just makes things a lot easier when someone who knows what they're doing gets yes, everything arranged. For it. Yeah. Yes. Well, it takes full speed, but even just arranging where the links are, because I mean, that was going to take a lot of my time trying to research that. Yeah. But I'm probably we actually got clear instructions. JC to do mostly it. clear instructions. We were given links to do everything. You know, go here, t do this, type this. Uh, we were told the tricks and tips like, oh, yeah, by the way, when you get to this part, you don't have to fill this out. Uh, when you get to the part about Kaylee, where Kaylee living in Pennsylvania, just fill, or in Luxembourg, just fill it out as if she lives in Pennsylvania. It's perfectly legal. It'll get corrected later. It's just the system can't handle Luxembourg. So, yeah. It, it handled her passport and identif identity verification just fine. It just, just couldn't handle the text field for Luxembourg. So uh, that got corrected. It yeah. now it says Luxembourg. So we're good. Like it's not it's not even like we had to fool anybody or trick anything. This is an above board traditional marriage. It's not even a proxy marriage. It's not even there isn't even something called a remote marriage. Yeah. It's a traditional marriage that we got done remotely. And this is a silicone ring because I, I, I am a sparky and I don't want to blow up my, my finger. One more thing I wanted to share because obviously everything was supposed to be in person. And I have one thing that I commissioned. I know I showed you, but now I want to officially show Oh, everyone. yeah, yeah, yeah. I commissioned a drawing by Neil Slorens, like as a Sorry, small say, celebration. Sorry, emphasize it. Neil who? Slorens. Neil Slorens. Yeah. And who is he? He is a cartoonist. He makes cartoon books, but he also makes a lot of political cartoons for, for the National Newspaper in Scotland. For the National Newspaper in Scotland? Is it called The National? Yeah, it's called okay. The National. There and it's so cute. I've seen this already, so I'm not that surprised. Yeah. But it's so cute. I know. I couldn't keep it a secret from you. <laughs> it was too difficult. <laughs> that is so neat that, that he yeah. made that for us. Yeah. My um, I have a I have a story that I've told uh, Kaylee a bunch. My uncle uh, told his girlfriend that he was forty when he was really fifty, and we sent him a happy fiftieth birthday card, and he got caught. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's unfortunate. But also kind of his fault. Also yes. kind of his fault. Yes, oh no, he <laughs> deserved that one. Yes, they uh, and and she instantly broke up with him. Oh, I, don't, I, don't think, I, just, I just don't think she wanted to date a 50-year-old man. I think she wanted to date a 40-year-old man. And that's yeah. understandable, What's too. really changed besides the fact that he's a filthy liar? Yeah, that's... Yeah, well, I, guess, I think that's <laughs> That's like the biggest one, probably. The lack of trust. So that's our show, everyone. I'm Leonard French, your favorite newlywed pirate hat wearing copyright attorney. This is Lawful Masses, your favorite legal news and education channel here on YouTube and Twitch and Floatplane. Thank you very much to our financial supporters in the month of July. Thank you to BU number one Simmons. Very special thanks to you. Thank you to our $50 plus supporters, Nicely Done Defense, Joe Tyson, Wes Delge, Citizen of the Sovereign, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Kyle Mudrock, Spirit Bear, Jan Negray, Michael Pierce, Daniel Perez, Blackleaf, Benjamin Hightoff, Steven, Cute Grills in Your Area, Strawberry Pup Tart, Long Reach Jones, Definitely Not Prenda Law, Ugly Grill, Shiloh T, Gregory Conklin, Josh Baker, Rudolph Becher Jr., Oscar the Prophet, Jay Dixon, Hot Grills in Your Area, Ammonite, and Brandon Abel. And thank you to the $5 plus supporters who are scrolling on the screen in front of me and on the LED panel behind me. And you will all be in the description of the videos that drop. I love you all. I will see you then. Bye. Stay with me. Oh,